Do you still need to understand guide numbers when using a flash? I'm going to tell you on today's episode of Ask David Bergman. Hey there, everybody. Welcome back. Here I am, as always, answering your photography questions. If you've got photo questions, you know what to do. Go to AskDavidBergman.com, fill out that form, and I just might pick your question to answer right here on a future show. Also, go ahead and click that subscribe button down below. Myself and the other photo hosts on Adorama TV are putting out free content for you all week long. I hope you're a subscriber. Hit the little bell icon. You'll be notified as soon as new shows come out all week long. Also, I'll put a link down below to my new show on my personal YouTube channel called From the Vault. I'm looking back at my 30-year archive of images and telling the stories behind the scenes of some of my more well-known photographs. All right, let's get right to today's show. I've got a great question sent in from Eric L. And he wants to know, you've spent a great deal of time discussing various aspects of flash like high-speed sync, diffusers, and metering. Given all of that, are guide numbers still relevant? So guide number is a spec that's given for any flash that's on the market. And what it does essentially is give you an idea of how much light you can get out of that strobe. By the way, don't get hung up on this. I use the word strobe and flash interchangeably. Some people consider strobes to be like studio monolights and speed lights to be flashes, but I use them interchangeably. They're basically the same thing. So don't worry about that. Now, The funny thing is that the companies don't often make the guide number super obvious, but they always love to talk about how many watt seconds their flash has. Now you might be thinking to yourself, watt seconds actually do the same thing as guide numbers since it tells you how much power the strobe has. But the truth is guide number is actually the more helpful of the two specs. Let me explain what they both are and you'll understand it. So you might've seen flashes that are 200 watt seconds, 400, 600, 1200, even up to 2,400 or 3,200 watt seconds. That number is a measurement of how much energy a flash can store. A common analogy is that it's like saying how much gas is in your car's tank. So what that is is potential energy. And that energy is then released when the flash fires. Now, how much of that energy is converted into light? Not all of it is. Some of it goes to heat. And I'm sure the engineers can tell me where the rest of that energy goes, but it doesn't all turn into light. It's going to vary wildly based on a number of different factors. Let's take two different cars now and go back to our gas analogy. Say you've got an old clunker and a modern sports car. They both might hold 20 gallons of gas, right? But if you step on the pedal, I bet different things are going to happen. One of them is going to accelerate a lot faster. One of them is going to, you know, go at faster speeds consistently. They're very going to be very different, even though they take the same 20 gallons of gas. Now it's kind of the same thing with a flash. It's not really a perfect analogy, but you get the idea. Some flashes are just more efficient at converting that energy. You might have two 600 watt second flashes placed at the same distance from your subject, but one is gonna give you more light output than the other. Now, there are a lot of great videos out there that prove this, including one from my friend and Adorama TV founder, Mark Wallace. Hey, Mark. Um, It's an older video, but I'm gonna put a link down below. He does a fantastic job explaining watt seconds and showing the difference between different strobe brands and models. So then what does guide number actually mean? Well, it actually tells you how much light travels a certain distance while shooting at a specified aperture. So here's the formula to calculate guide number. It's exactly that, f-stop times distance. Now, I know you didn't think there was gonna be math in today's uh, video, but it's really pretty simple. Let's take a look at the Canon 600 EXRT Speedlight, for example. It's named the 600 because the guide number is 60.0. And what that means is at 60 meters, the flash is gonna give you a proper 18% gray exposure if you're shooting at F1. Plugging that into the formula, 60 meters times one gives a guide number of 60. Now, by the way, if they don't specify, the numbers are calculated when shooting at 100 ISO. Also, guide numbers usually listed in meters, probably because the manufacturers are often based in countries like Japan that use the metric system. Although sometimes what they'll do is put it in feet because it's a higher number and actually sounds better. So be careful when you're comparing those two numbers. Now, of course, you're probably not shooting at F1. I've never actually used a lens that goes to F1. So what if you're shooting at something more real world like F4? Now, since we know two of the three variables for that speed light, we can plug it into the equation. 60, the guide number, equals four times what? So in other words, 60 divided by four is 15. So at F4, that 600 EX speed light is gonna give me the proper exposure, an 18% gray exposure, um, when my subject is 15 meters away. Now, a flash with a higher guide number, of course, is gonna give you more light. 
The Flashpoint Explorer 1200 Pro, for example, has a guide number of 124. That means you can shoot from 124 meters away at F1. In the real world, at something like F4, you could shoot at 31 meters or just over 100 feet away. That is a really powerful flash. Now keep in mind, there are a few other caveats to be aware of. The companies, of course, wanna make the guide number look as good as possible because that's just smart marketing. So they also have to specify the conditions under which you can get to that number. And you really have to pay attention to that. Back to that 600 EX speed light in the manual, there's a chart that shows you how the guide number changes based on the flash's zoom setting. Some flashes allow you to focus the light by zooming the flash in or out. As you zoom in more, the light is gonna become more focused and it'll be brighter in the middle because that's what a zoom does, right? A guide number of 60 is the maximum that flash can do. And that's only gonna happen when the flash is zoomed all the way at 200 millimeters and you're shooting at full power, not using high speed sync and without any modifiers like a softbox, umbrella or any gels or anything like that. Now I can't think of many times that I'm gonna shoot a speed light zoomed at 200. It's much more common for me to use it on the wider end as I'm often bouncing it into a ceiling or a softbox. Now on the chart, you can see that if you shoot full power at 24 millimeters on that flash zoom, the guide number drops from 60 to 27. And if I wanna shoot quarter power to preserve my batteries or get quicker recycle times, now I'm at 13 and a half. Remember also, that's at F1. So at F4, that's gonna give me 3.375 meters or about 11 feet. If I need more light than that, I can obviously bump up my ISO. But while speed lights are super convenient, they do have power limitations. That's actually a pretty good number for a small speed light. But remember that Explore 1200 Pro has a much higher guide number than a speed light. So um, that's gonna give you more light, but it's also a lot bigger. So that's the trade-off between using a small battery powered, you know, portable speed light versus a larger uh, studio flash. So Eric, you asked if guide numbers are still relevant. Well. Back in the old days of 20 years ago, <laughs> most strobes were all manual and we were still shooting film, so you generally couldn't see your results right away. Using the guide number, you could calculate your exposure just based on your distance to the subject, your flash's distance to the subject. Today, well, so many people shoot TTL, which actually does all of the calculations for you. But even when shooting manual, of course, seeing the digital image pop up on the screen lets us know that our exposures are correct. So I don't really see much use for guide numbers today while on an actual shoot. However, when buying a flash, I think it's a much better way to know how much light that flash can give as opposed to just looking at watt seconds. It makes it super easy to compare different strobes, especially when you're looking at competing brands. The Flashpoint Explore 600 Pro, for example, is a 600 watt second strobe and has a guide number of 285 feet or 87 meters. The Profoto B1 is a 500 watt second strobe and the guide number is listed at 291 feet or about 88 meters. So that's really just about the same amount of light, even though the Profoto has 100 fewer watt seconds than the Flashpoint. Now the Profoto, obviously, by looking at those, those specs, we can tell that it uses the energy more efficiently, especially with the magnum reflector that they use to calculate the guide numbers. And it should be more efficient, right? It's three times the price. Profoto, um, there are lots of other reasons why people use it besides just power. It is a high-end, top-of-the-line brand that many top commercial photographers are gonna use on their biggest jobs. But that is a completely different video. The point is, watt seconds don't really tell you how much light a particular flash can give you. Guide number is a much better indicator when comparing different strobes. So Eric, I hope that helps. Thanks for sending that in that question. What flashes are you guys using and do you actually look at the guide number? Maybe you'll start doing that now. Let me know in the comments down below. Remember to send your photo questions. AskDavidBergman.com is where you can submit those. I'm back here every week with a brand new episode. I hope you'll join me. Come back next week. I'll have a brand new question right here at 10 a.m. Eastern every Monday on Ask David Bergman. <laughs>